Welcome to Christian Faith Ministries, where Drs. Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. As we embrace the future together with so many uncertainties, we are here to help you survive and thrive during this pandemic and beyond. Join us today as we declare war on poverty and sickness. Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Thomas, and I want to welcome you once again to the teaching ministry of Dr. Greg Thomas and Christian Faith Ministries. Now, today we're going to be teaching from a wonderful subject about giant killers. And I'm really talking about leadership qualities, you know, and who's best to, to, to teach us and, and, and who, who, who's a great example is the character David. Uh, the, the biblical character David is one of my favorite biblical characters because David went through everything you can think of. And yet God, oh my God, God saw something in David, glory to God, that I believe it was because of what God saw in David and what David believed in his God, amen, that God would do in his life in spite of all the things that he went through. And today we want to talk about some things he experienced even as a young man. Now you, you may be saying, well, Dr. Greg, uh, you know, I'm a young man and, uh, and, and um, I need some direction today. You know, when I pray that today uh, you would qualify, be qualified, recognize that God has qualified you, you know, to be a giant killer. You, you, you have things that you want to do and things that you want to achieve and help others. And, and you see people suffering and the things that God has called you to do. But yes, you, you've been struggling because of low self-worth and other issues of sin and past failures and on and on and on. What I want you to understand is that, you know, it was one thing that motivates and that, 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 that gets people ignited, you know, when it comes down to doing things for those who are the least of these is their love for one another. You know, I want you to understand that our love for others, it must be demonstrated by our willingness to sacrifice and our commitment to help others face the challenges, the things that they're suffering from, the, the abuse, and, and the, the, in other words, the giants that they're facing in their lives. You, you may be experiencing a time of unbelievable pressure, unbelievable stress. Maybe you're b b bound by fear because of rejection and poverty and abandonment and debt and sickness and disease and the economy, and the list goes on and on, but before you are able to help others face their giants, you must first learn to face your own. And in the process of facing your personal giants, God will change your DNA as he qualifies you to be a giant killer. You look at the things going on in, in, in society today and there are people that are suffering under all of those things. And I can list a lot of things today, but you know, I want to get into this message. See, so my, my question to you today is what are the giants that you are having to face personally? The first thing to do is to stop and face them and stop running from them. And, and, and you stop and face them. One of the things that I learned to do, amen, is to write them down. You know, when I, when I, when I write things down, there's just something supernatural that happens. I get it in front of me. And, 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 and as I write them down, I also list, uh, the benefits of facing my giant. You see, he's writing down, uh, the benefits is essential, uh, to facing and overcoming your personal giant. See, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 22 to 27, it says, and David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper. And he ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was a champion, the Philistine of Gat, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who, here listen to me now, who kills the king, who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches and will give him his daughter. And give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. 
Now that got David's attention. Then the Bible says, praise God, then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the omens of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner saying, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. Here it is in verse 25. It says, the men of Israel says, have you seen this man who is coming up? Surely he is coming up to defy Israel. And it will be that the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and, and, and honor and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Oh, can we say amen? Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Write this down. Whenever you take a stand to face your personal giants, there will always be benefits. However, when you fake, make a decision to fight uh, for others, the benefits will always outweigh the risk. Yes, there is risk. Now, before you take a stand for others, hear me now, oh, you will have to first face your personal giants. I can't say that enough. Some of them will be the voices of fear. Some of them will be the voices of intimidation and criticizing and the opinions of others. And, 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 and you will also have to face the voices of failure, places where you failed before. The voices of failure are the places where you failed and in the past and is still holding on to you. I have prayed for and helped many who are struggling with this low self-esteem issue. Failed businesses and failed marriages and uh, fear and, 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 and secret sins. But our God is able to forgive. Hallelujah. He's able to deliver. Hallelujah. He's able to heal. And I'm come to tell you today, he's able to restore you, praise God, from where you failed in the past. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise this afternoon or this morning. Glory to God. Now let's turn, turn to 1 Samuel 17, verse 32 through 50 where you find the story. Oh, I'm going to give you eight qualifications of a giant killer. You Praise God, you're going to find that you, you God's been preparing you, praise God, to do the things that you see that you desire to do. And it, it, it's going to take giant killers in this season, praise God. But I come to tell you, God is raising up men and women just like you who's already been through suffering, who's already been rejected, who have already been facing fear, who've been told that they were going to die from some dreaded disease or sickness. Oh my God, but you overcame, glory to God, or you're overcoming, glory to God, because you have a God who is able to heal. You have a God who is able to deliver. You have a God who is able to restore. Hallelujah. Oh my God, glory to God. Come on, let's go to go to 1 Samuel 17, 32 through 50. Let's look at these eight qualifications of a giant killer. The number one we find in 1 Samuel 17, 30, 32, David was confident. Oh, my God, if you're going to be a giant killer, you can't be, lead. praise God, weak. Praise God, you got to be confident. Uh, you got to be bold. Oh my God. If you're going to be a giant killer in this season, glory to God. Listen to what he said. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fall or fail him because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. David walked by faith and not by what he saw. Uh, who is it that God has sent you to encourage who is full of fear? Because of the things that they're dreading, the things that have become upon them. It has been said that Saul was also afraid because he was the likely candidate to have to fight uh, the Goliath. It was his responsibility to go out and meet Goliath and to fight Goliath, but he was afraid. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Here's number two. Glory to God. First Samuel 17 verse 33 says, Saul said David was only a boy. Glory to God. Read it. Saul, Saul, a boy. Hallelujah. Because of his age. But listen to me. But David saw himself as a mighty warrior, as a man of God, as a man of victory. Hallelujah. Oh, do not allow the opinions of others. Glory to God. To, to become your opinion 
of yourself. What are your opinions about who you are? Don't you allow what other people say who, who they think you are? They may say, oh, you, that's, that's, that's John's, uh, son. Oh my God. And in, in, in their mind, they're snickering saying, oh, nothing could come out of John's son because of John's dad. You know, you know, he was a crack addict, you know, or, uh, you know, all kinds of things people will say about you. Oh my God. And you got to say to yourself, it's not what they say is what are you saying about yourself? Oh, praise God. Glory to God. You got to see yourself the way God sees you. Saul said David was only a boy. But I come to tell you, who does God say that you are? My God, he, who do you see yourself as? David saw himself as a man of God. Uh, he saw himself as a warrior. He saw himself as a champion. Uh, you may be in poverty today, but you don't have to think like a person in poverty. Oh my God, you may desire to have a nice brand new car and you don't, don't even have a bicycle. But every time you put those big old 12s to the pavement, you see yourself getting in that nice luxury car that you, de drive, that you desire. You may not have a home, praise God, as a homeowner. And every time you you put your key in that apartment door. You see yourself moving into that home one day. I'm telling you, God is a God of restoration. God is a God of healing. God is a God of uh, restoration. Hallelujah. Here's number three. First Samuel 17, verse 34. David was full of humility. I just told you, praise God. He praise God. He didn't see himself the way others saw him. He didn't. He, he didn't rely on the opinions of others. And now, praise God. David was praise God. David was full of humility. In other words, he remained an humble servant leader. He told King Saul in verse thirty-four, praise God. He was his servant. Now, are you willing to remain a faithful servant? Are you willing to remain, praise God, as you move into leadership? Will you become a, a, a servant leader? Whatever level of authority you may find yourself in, it's, in, it's, in, it's important that you remain faithful. Praise God, a faithful man abounds in blessings. But while you're being faithful, one key element to being faithful is keeping that spirit of humility. Here's number four in verse 34b. He said he had been faithful. This is David. He's talking to Saul. He had been faithful to serve as a shepherd over his father's sheep. Now, this was David's defining moment, my brothers and sisters. David was not going to miss the opportunity that he knew God had prepared him for. Are you, praise God, are you on the stage of your, your praise God, are you on the stage of your defining moment? Uh, he said he had been faithful to serve as a shepherd over his father's sheep. Uh, have you been faithful with the few things? Uh, have you been faithful in your church uh, returning your tithes? Uh, have you been faithful on your assignment? Uh, have you been faithful? Praise God. God has given you great vision to be what it is. You've seen what you want to become, but have you begun putting together what it is that God has called you to do? Where's your business plan? Uh, or where's your business proposal? Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Have you been faithful? David was ready. Glory to God. Hallelujah. do I want you to know he said he had been faithful to serve as a shepherd over his father's sheep. Listen to me. Ru don't run from your personal giant. Why? Because God is allowing them to train you to become a giant killer. You thought those things that you had to face, praise God, had come to destroy you. But I come to tell you that they didn't come to destroy you. They came to prepare you for such a time as this. Glory to God. Come on, give God some praise. Oh my God, God is allowing those things to train you to become a giant killer for the nations. Oh my God, kings and others that will define you and shape you for your assignment. I'm telling you, God is getting you ready. Mm, my God, somebody's been waiting on, praise God, a project to come through. If great financial reward for your labor, and it ain't happened yet. Notice what I said, it hasn't happened yet. But I'm telling you right now, praise God, God has prepared you for such a time as this. It's going to happen. But God, in the meantime, you recognize there's some issues going on inside of your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, that God is trying to prepare you so that when he 
he does elevate you, when he does release those funds, you'll be able to go forth and fulfill the assignment. But he's got to deal with, you got to know how to handle those issues that keep you full of fear, uh, that cause you to run, praise God, instead of standing up and facing the giants. Because if you run from your giants, uh, you're not going to stand up like a man, to stand up like a woman of God and help others who are struggling in areas that you used to struggle in. Oh my God. God will use you. Here's number five. We see it in verse 34, C through 35. It's praise God. God, write this down. God will use you. Praise God. Why? Because you stood up and faced your fight, your, your, your personal giants. In other words, God will use your personal experiences. God will use your personal testimonies. Huh? David testifies to King Saul in verse 34c through 35. Oh my God, David testifies to King Saul how as a shepherd boy, he defeated the lion. Uh, how he defeated the bear with his bare hands, the Bible says. Listen to what he said. When a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, uh, I went out after it. Uh, and when it arose against me, I caught it by his beard and and struck and killed it. Uh, your servant has killed both lion and bear. I come to ask you today, brothers and sisters, what is your testimony uh, uh, of your past victories? Huh? Don't you, praise God, don't you count out those small parade victories, uh, those small beginnings. Uh, God is up to something big. Hallelujah. God's got something special just for you. Glory to God, those times when you had those tears streaming down your face because you had to stand up and go to court uh, because of uh, uh, child support. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you had tears in your eyes because of the sexual abuse that as a young man or young girl that you constantly was going through uh, from, from the hands of a family, friend, or loved one. I'm telling you, praise God in the midst of it all. I'm telling you, God's got something he's preparing you for because there are other little boys and little girls that are going through the same thing and they need giant killers who have been there hallelujah to help them navigate through the storm help them navigate through the pain to navigate through the suffering navigate through all the fears and the anxiety and the frustration and the disappointment and the abandonment and the rejection and all that they're going through they need people that look like you uh, uh, to help rescue them. Oh my God. Uh, yes, God is preparing you. Oh, there's a song I hear in my spirit. He's preparing you. Oh my God. He's preparing you. Oh my God. How did I, I'm preparing you for such a time as this, says the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. You've been through pain. You've been through shame. But yet I am ready to raise you up. Praise God and launch you into, praise God, your destiny. Oh my God, people see you one way today, but they ain't seeing where you're getting ready to go. I'm about to bring you from the back of the line to the front of the line, says God. Oh my God, David said when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, he said, I went after it. Are you listening to me? What are you doing? Oh my God, are you going after those things that's coming to take away those things that God has given you assignment over and God has given you. <laughs> oh my God. Come on, don't forget your testimonies of what God has done in the past. Here's number six. First Samuel 17, verse 36 and 37. David knew, this is so important, brothers and sisters, who he was. He also knew, write this down, who Goliath was. <laughs> and here's number three. He also knew who his God was was and is and will be. The Bible says that he boldly told Saul that Goliath was an uncircumcised Philistine that had come to defy Israel and his army of the living God. Your boldness when facing giants must be based on your faith and trust in a living God who you who you are in Christ. I come to tell you this is your season, brothers and sisters. Who are you? Hallelujah. Who is your enemy? Huh? Uh, who is it that, praise God, that 
God has sent you to conquer. I come to tell you because you know who your God is, you already have the victory. Mm, my God is number seven. About to bring it to a close. Uh, verse 38, 39. Don't, uh, don't allow the ways that others deal with their giants become your way. See, so often we grow up in families and they teach us behavior patterns of how they deal with their giants. Uh, your mama may have dealt with her because of uh, sexual immorality. Daddy may have dealt with it because of drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Oh, thinking he can numb himself to get away from the pain that he's already experienced and that he's got to face. Uh, Saul wanted David to wear his armor uh, to face Goliath. Are you with me? So what burdens uh, are you carrying that you have taken on that's too heavy for you? Because somebody else wants, don't want to deal with their issues. Now they want you to carry their burdens when you listen to and try to please others by allowing how they handle their giants. You will never know just how great you could be. Listen to me. Always listen to the voice of God. David refused. Listen to me. He, re he did what? He refused to wear Saul's armor. To face the giant called Goliath. Listen to me. You must refuse to wear the false things that others use to deal with their giants. Alcohol is false. Huh? Uh, drugs is false. It numbs you, but it never takes care of what you're dealing with. You're going to have to still face it when you come out of the num numbness. Uh, what are the things that you see in others that you have been sent to serve that they use to handle their giants? Uh, some will use all forms of addictions to deal with their fears of facing their personal giants. And here's number eight. Verse 40 through 51, I come to say to you, use what God has given you already to destroy the giants of others. David used, the Bible says, something really simple, a slingshot in a stone. It's been said that even though he had five smooth stones, he reserved the other four for Goliath's big brothers who were also giants. Uh, David struck the giant Goliath so hard that he fell to, to the ground. Then as he fell, he took Goliath's own sword to kill him and cut off his head. Uh, oh my God, what are the giants that you have been sent to help others overcome? What are the giants that you have been sent to help others conquer? Maybe it's to help others become debt free uh, and to break the spirit of poverty? Uh, could it be to help others overcome drug and alcohol abuse? Ah, uh, uh, depression and fear of failure, suicidal uh, attempts, uh, cancer, food addictions, refusing to have sex while being single and not married, how to have a successful marriage, huh? No matter what it is, my brothers and sisters, always remember, write this down, that the giants you decide to face today just might become the ministry of, or business that God will use you to promote you as he launches you into your destiny. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my God. I pray you got something out of this. Come on, let's pray. Come on, bow your heads right now and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for using me to help others face their giants today. And thank you for delivering me from my personal giants. I realize that no matter how difficult it may have been, it was you, oh Lord, who never deserted me. When I needed you the most, you were there. It's been said that my misery will become my ministry, my foundation, nonprofit, uh, uh, NGO, whatever it is, uh, my business, the places where I've had my greatest challenges, uh, were the places where you were preparing me, training me, developing me for a greater cause and greater purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. I pray that you got something out of today's teaching. My God, and if you've been blessed, come on, write me. Let me know, praise God, that these messages are transforming your life and, and it's, it's, it's helping you, oh, amen, to face various challenges. And we'll continue. But remember, praise God, that the spirit of greatness is upon you. The seed of greatness lives within you. Go forth today and do something great. In somebody else's life. I come to tell you, praise God, God has qualified you to be a giant killer. Listen to me. We'll see you again next time. This is Dr. Greg Thomas saying bye until next time. Don't forget to sow into this ministry. We need your help. We need your support. And we appreciate it. And one thing I need you to do is go on and subscribe. Glory to God. Hit that notification bell tag somebody else send this message to others who are facing all kinds of pressure all kinds of things that they're going through today god just may be preparing you to be their giant killer just by sending this message and maybe he's preparing them to help others overcome their giant this is dr greg thomas saying see you next time You've been listening to Christian Faith Ministries broadcast, where doctors Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. If you've been blessed and desire to give, you need prayer, or simply want more information about upcoming events or training, go to cfmnola.org. Welcome to the IMLACA Basic Boot Camp. You may be asking the question, what does IMLACA stand for? IMLACA is the abbreviation for International Marketplace Leaders and Chaplaincy Academy. The purpose of launching IMLACA is because the world as we've known it is changing rapidly daily. When the coronavirus pandemic hit in 2019, the entire world shifted from an industrial way of doing things in the marketplace to a digital way. However, one thing that is not changed and will never change is people are suffering and the need for marketplace ministry leaders in business, government, and the church that are equipped, trained, and released as ordained men and women of God as chaplains around the world. This academy was created with you in mind. Yes, you. You've always wanted to be used by God, to be a servant leader in the marketplace, to pray for the sick, perform weddings, christenings, officiate over funerals, and much more. I believe our God has handpicked you for the IMLACA. This course is online, open book, self-paced, self-study, and self-test. Upon completion, you will participate and receive the following. One. Certificate of Completion. Two, you'll participate in an online or in-person ordination and graduation ceremony. By that time, you'll receive your ordination and graduation certificates, signet ring, chaplaincy badge, and lapel pin, digitally or by express mail.